This is Geometry Chapter 12, Section 2, in which we will study the surface areas of prisms and cylinders. We'll start with prisms, and there are two kinds of areas that we're interested in. One is the lateral area. You find the lateral area by taking the perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. On this pentagonal prism that I have here, the lateral area that we're talking about are these five rectangular surfaces going around the, the middle of it, as it were. If you have, have the uh, pentagon in the front and the pentagon in the back, then we're talking about the five faces going around the middle. That's the lateral area. To get the total surface area, you take that lateral part, those five going around the side, the middle, and add to it the area of the base twice because you have one base in the front and one base in the back. In formulas, lateral area is equal to perimeter of the base times the height. The P is capitalized to remind you it's about the base. And then surface area is take that lateral area plus two times the area of the base. So we have a triangular prism here that our job is to figure out the lateral area and the surface area for it. Well, to find the lateral area, we need the perimeter of this base, which means we need this third side. Now, luckily, we know this is a right triangle. It makes life a lot simpler. So we can do Pythagorean to it, clean up the arithmetic, and we find out that C is a little over 11, 11.314. That will help us find the lateral area. Add up all the sides to make the perimeter times the height of the prism. Now I know some of you are looking at that saying, well, that can't be the height because it doesn't go up or down. Remember, in three-dimensional things, the height of something is the distance between the two bases at least in prisms, it's the distance between two bases. If this ramp were turned on its end so that the right triangle was on the bottom, then the height would be where you want it to be. But it really doesn't matter the orientation. It's the distance between two bases. So a little cleanup work with the arithmetic and we get our lateral area. To find surface area, for whatever reason I didn't put LA, I just put L. There, that makes it better. We need to take the lateral area from before plus two times the area of the base. Well, the area of a triangle is one half base times height, one half eight times eight. Punch that through my calculator and I get a final answer for surface area of just under 392. Notice in both cases these areas are square millimeters. Now if we have a cylinder instead of a prism, the idea is still basically the same. It's still the perimeter of the base times the height. Okay. The base is a circle, so the perimeter of the circle is really the circumference of it. So, circumference times height, or if you want to, you can plug in what you know circumference is. 2 pi radius times height. And then to get the total surface area, we add the two circles. So we could write it this way as 2b. Insert your own Shakespeare joke there. Or we could write it as we know what the area of a base is, pi r squared. So we could have 2 pi rh from La 
plus 2 pi r squared. You may be familiar with that formula from junior high or some such. If not, there it is. So let's find ourselves a lateral area and a surface area for a cylinder. Okay. In this situation, though, they didn't give us the radius, they gave us the diameter. That doesn't scare us. Lateral area is still circumference times height. Another version of circumference is pi times d. You may remember that from chapter 10. So pi times d, pi times 15 times 18, gives me 848.230 square centimeters. Then to get the surface area, we'll take that value that we just got, plus 2 pi r squared. Notice r is 7.5 because diameter was 15. And my trusty calculator gives me a final answer of just over 1201 and a half uh, square centimeters. So prisms and cylinders basically have the same approach. You want a perimeter, a distance around the base, whatever shape that happens to be, times the height between the two bases. And then surface area is add the two bases onto it. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.